Thursday, October 31st. Years of consuming content has brain rotted me into some desperate YouTuber wannabe. I must choose my video topics carefully. We have an intro now, but still absolutely no editing skill. I wish I could say I wasn't just yelling into the void of the internet. I don't know. Maybe this is all for nothing. But I want to try. Gaming Cookie Guy Entertainment. Hello and welcome back to Got You Entertainment, where in this video I want to talk about Batman, and more specifically, The Batman, the 2022 film directed by Matt Reeves. And I want to say right up top, this movie is genuinely great. It's a nice change of pace to just talk about something that people seem to universally love. Now, it's a bit long in the tooth, uh, which only gets exacerbated when you see it on like back to back to back nights like I did when it came out for some reason. But I'm not going to talk about like just shortening the movie. That's not what this video is about. Instead, what I want to focus on in my little corner of a rewrite of this movie is the relationship between the Riddler and the Batman. So what was probably my favorite scene in a movie full of great scenes was the one between Robert Pattinson's Batman and Paul Dano's Riddler, where we finally get to see these two characters interact face to face following the Riddler's arrest. And we get what is like now a modern classic movie villain monologue, not just that, but just a monologue in general from Paul Dano all about Bruce Wayne and how he is the only one they didn't bring down together. And this is why it's my favorite scene in the movie, because in this moment, everything shifts. The whole perspective of what Batman has been doing up to this point changes when the Riddler reveals that he genuinely believed that he and Batman were doing this together, that the Riddler was the brains to Batman's brawn. I thought this was an absolutely brilliant subversion at the time, and I've only grown to appreciate it more with time. And so it only makes sense that my biggest issue of the movie would stem from something that I absolutely loved. When the Riddler says that he needed Batman to complete his mission, when he said he needed Batman to quote unquote, bring him into the light, I don't believe him. Because as it is, as this movie is written, it seems like the Riddler really could have done all of this on his own. Now, like, follow me on this. So we have Target one, Mayor Don Mitchell Jr., the Riddler opening scene, kills him with his own two hands. Definitely did not need Batman for that one. Moving on to target number two, we have the district attorney, Gil Coulson. The Riddler could have just strangled him in his car, but he chooses to have a bomb strapped to him instead. Either way, he got the job done himself. Uh, you know, for a guy who claims not to be physical, he's gotten pretty physical so far with these two first targets. Moving on to target number three, Bruce Wayne himself. Uh, for this one, he mails a bomb to Bruce's house. And I don't exactly know why the Riddler thought this one would work. Like, does he not know that mail addressed to a billionaire is probably not going directly to the billionaire? I, I don't know. Regardless of however he thought that was going to go, he did not include Batman on that. He did not need him to, like, deliver the package to his own house. And finally, we have target number four, Carmine Falcone. Falco Falcone. I've heard it both ways. I'm going to go with Falcone because that's what they said in the Batman movie. And more than any of the other three, this is the target that bothers me the most in regards to this movie and is the whole onus behind me making this video because the Riddler says he was never going to get Falcone out of there. He needed Batman to bring him out into the light so he could shoot him. But here's the problem. We watched the Riddler in this movie earlier bring Falcone out into the light. His two like most elusive targets, Bruce Wayne and Carmine Falcone, both went to the funeral of the late mayor that the Riddler himself murdered. So you're telling me that like nowhere before, during, after the funeral procession could Riddler not get a shot on Falcone? Like he got him there. He, he didn't have a follow up plan. Oh, you're really not as smart as I thought you were. So then when the Riddler reveals to Batman in that cell that, hey, I thought we were working together on this. You you weren't on the same page as me? That's crazy. Batman's reaction in that moment is correct because he's not sitting there like, oh my gosh, he was right. Oh, I, I've been playing right into his hand. I was just a pawn. Like, that's not Batman's reaction. Batman's reaction is, you're crazy. Absolutely not. That's not even close to reality you're pathetic 
psychopath. And so with that in mind, knowing that this reveal is my favorite part of the movie, I want to help it along a little bit by making just the smallest of small changes. And here it is. Falcone does not go to that funeral. In fact, to anybody and everybody's knowledge, Falcone never leaves that safe house. Now, this does rob us of that interaction between Bruce and Carmine at the funeral, but we don't really need it. I said this video wasn't about shortening the movie, but let's cut the let's trim it where we can. We don't really need that scene. And now this becomes something that the Riddler really did need Batman's assist on, and it gives his per point of view and perspective a little more weight, a little more credence. Because basically what I would like to be able to do at the end of this movie is look back on it from the Riddler's perspective. I, I like lay out all the steps as if you were the Riddler from planting the thumb drive after murdering the mayor all the way up to flooding Gotham. And I want him to be able to think, yeah, me and Batman were doing that together. Now, without this change, does the movie fall apart under scrutiny? Not at all. At least I don't think so. But this is just one of those small things that makes the scene more airtight and helps me to stay in this moment. It doesn't take me out of the movie right when the getting's good. And so there you have it. A shorter video, but one I've had in the back of my mind for a while now. So I'm glad I finally got an excuse to make it. Uh, what about you? Is this going to become like a every Thursday, October 31st rewatch for you? Let me know in the comments. Uh, like the video if you liked it and subscribe for more. I'll see you in the next one. Psychopath. Psychopath.